All right, Maya. Um, thanks for the live session. That was great. Thank you. Um, and I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Who or what was your main inspiration for becoming an artist and becoming who you are today? Um, I'm constantly collecting inspirations. Um, so there's like many different answers to the question. For example, like being an indie artist and going for it and starting my own career, managing myself. And there were some artists that came before me that really inspired me, such as Lettucey and actually, believe it or not, J. Ruth the Damager. I remember clearly him talking to me at Joe's Pub in New York and saying, man, just do it yourself. Just go do it yourself, man. Don't be afraid. And like, so that was a big inspiration in terms of just doing it as a business and not waiting to be quote unquote discovered. All right, that makes complete sense. That sounds good. And um, if you could duet with like anyone out there, you know, dead or alive, uh, what would be your dream collaboration? There are, you know, that's such a hard question. I mean, oh my gosh. Like, I would go bananas if I could duet with Sting, only because it would be unexpected and he's such an amazing songwriter and our voices together. It just would be not the most obvious thing. And I'm, I would love to sing with you know, would sting. Um, oh man, if there was, I mean, there's just so many, like, can you imagine being in a position to duet with Donny Hathaway? Like, that would have been incredible. Otis Redding? Come on, the list is too long. <laughs> I can't answer that question. Well, some say I look a little like Sting, but I can't say this, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 I would never uh, even attempt. Um, and then, What has been your most powerful experience so far as an artist? What has been like an overwhelming, beautiful experience? Well, um, most, that stands out. most powerful, I, you know, I do a lot of traveling and, and touring in unique and unusual locations like Sri Lanka or, uh, you know, East Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, you know. Um, I remember the first time I performed in Sarajevo in Bosnia, and it was really powerful for me. It was about 12,000 people in a sports arena, and I was a guest lead feature vocalist with a rock artist from that region. Mm -hmm. His name is Giboni. And the words I had to sing are like, you know, don't give up. Everything is going to be all right, you know. And this is not so far after the recovering from the war. Like as you drive through town, you could still see buildings that are being repaired and, and gun holes in the sides of buildings and cemeteries everywhere. Wow. And the sports arena, the back of the sports arena was actually converted into, the, into a cemetery, the entire back parking lot. Wow. So like before going on stage, I was really clear that every person in this audience, 10 to 12,000 people, has probably lost somebody. And for me to have the honor of being able to look out at all these faces and they all see me at once and I'm looking at them and I'm like, everything is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be all right. It was so powerful. It was really chilling and up uplifting. And I met people after who had seen that show, like a journalist told me like a year later, she's like, I felt like you were talking just to me. And, and that's what I strive for in every performance. Okay. Wow, that's powerful for sure. Um, if you wouldn't pursue music as a career, what do you think you would do instead? Is there anything... There is no backup plan. There is no backup Guys, plan. Guys, no backup plan. Okay. Honestly, I, I mean... I, uh, Maybe you would be a painter or... No. no. Musician, Not okay, so much. singer. <laughs> Not musician, a singer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I actually considered acting. I'm not that I wouldn't still do acting, but um, so maybe I would act. Um, and I'm also a teacher and a motivational speaker, so I would be good at that. But all of it's centered around me being this this songwriter and singer. So it, it would, I don't know. I'd probably just die. <laughs> so maybe the next question is also going to be interesting for you. Um, I was wondering if you had the choice between eating the same dish for the rest of your life no. or listening to the same album again and again for the rest of your life, what would you rather give up? The same dish for the rest of your life and you can listen to any music you want? Yeah. Or the okay. I would, ha I would have to have variety in the, in the music. If I had to choose, right. it would have to, I'd have to have the variety of the music. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm that way about people, too. Like, I'm in love with people, and I really love the fact that I get to engage with people from all different cultures and all different attitudes and experiences. And, and to me, that turns me on. And so music is, is an extension of the soul, mm -hmm. so it's the same thing. Like, if I... I couldn't be around people that would crush me. It would hurt 
Maybe. Exactly. If you wouldn't be able to listen to music all over the place, you couldn't be all over the place because there's always music. So. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing, uh, what are you working on at the moment and what is it you would like to tell your fans, <coughs> your, your people out there? You know what, guys? I'd really love you all to follow me on my YouTube channel because I've been really updating it a lot. And I have a web series I'm really excited about called The Essence of Maya. And, um, you know, Twitter, Instagram. I just love to build with you all. So everything is just at Maya Asusena. If you know my name, you can find all my stuff. And let's grow this relationship together. I'd love to have you all stick around with me as, me, as I grow. Sounds great. Thank you so much, and um, we'll see each other soon, uh, for sure. Great seeing you. Thanks for having me. Microphone right. box. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you. Perfect.